What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here from Darium's Pokemon. Gonna be counting down the top 10 cards of Ultra Prism. Now, Ultra Prism, pretty cool set, definitely sweet. We've got new Prism cards, we've got some new supporter action going on. We've got some new interactions with the Lost Zone. A lot of new stuff coming out of the set. I don't think it's the most busted set ever, but definitely a step up from Crimson Invasion. So I am excited about this set, the new things that we get out of here. We got a whole new archetype, a couple of new, whole new decks out of this set. So it is going to be an exciting set to run down. If you don't agree with my my top 10 let me know in the comments below or on twitter at enjoy friend e -N -J -O -Y friend let me know there but i went over this list myself also with my friend natalie so this is at least between our opinions of the top 10 cards in ultra prism so starting off with number 10 we've got mount coronet <laughs> Mount Cornet is a stadium card, very good for metal type decks that want to accelerate metal energy from the hand, wink wink, Magnazone. So it says once during each player's turn, that player may put two metal energy cards from their discard pile into their hand. So this is just great for Magnazone. Pairs really well with Magnazone, being able to get the energy from the discard pile back to the hand, and then is reused with cards like uh, Dusk Main Necrozma, who discards energy when it attacks. So, just you have that cycle. You attack with Dusk Main Necrozma, discard the energy, get it back with Mount Coronet, and accelerate it back down with the Magnazone. And if you can have those three things in play, you're going to have a pretty powerful deck firing off huge attacks after huge attacks, which is super sweet. Also, the stadium could be used with Alolan Doug Trio. Shout out to Alolan Doug Trio, who did not quite make this list. I'm sorry, but he is a pretty cool card that does more damage for the amount of metal energy that you have in your hand so you could play Mount Coronet in an Alolan Doug Trio deck as well. Just think Mount Coronet definitely a cool addition to a brand new archetype that we get out of this set so I had to give it the number 10 spot on our top 10 cards of Ultra Prism. Moving on to number nine, we have Leafeon GX. Now, I do think that Leafeon is kind of like the worst of the two evolutions in this set. So, unfortunately, Leafeon is all the way down here at number nine. But Leafeon does have some pretty cool stuff going for it. We've got Breath of the Leaves, an ability. If this Pokemon's your active Pokemon, once during your turn before you attack me, heal 50 damage from one of your Pokemon that has energy attached to it. So, definitely a nifty little ability, allowing you to heal your bench. Pokemon that have energy attached to them and of course Grand Bloom GX allowing you to entirely evolve up your bench is sweet as well. I've seen some people talk about using Leafeon with you could pair it with the Lorantis promo and maybe just super boost up your solar beam damage output if you had all four Lorantis promo in play that's plus 80 damage. Solar beam does 110 190 damage with the choice band, you're swinging for 220 damage for a grass and a double colorless, which is not bad. Leafeon could be used in order to just set up your field of Pokemon, but my question is how easy is it going to be to actually get the Leafeon into the active position while also having a bench filled with basic Pokemon that you're ready to evolve? I'm not exactly sure, so that's kind of a to be continued. Leafeon GX does have some pretty cool, powerful stuff going for it, though, which is why we give it the number nine spot on our top 10 Pokemon from Ultra Prism. All right, coming in at number eight, we've got Dawn Wings Necrozma GX. This thing is insane. Psychic type Pokemon with an invasion ability, very reminiscent of Caldeo, stand in Caldeo from Boundaries Crossed. It's got the same ability once during a turn before you attack. If this Pokemon's on your bench, you may switch it with your active Pokemon. The ability to be able to go from the bench to the active posi uh, position is great. We got stand in Zoroark, who already does this in standard format, has been useful in Zoroark decks. This invasion, Dawn Wings Necrozma, is going to be very useful in a number of decks. I mean, in standard format, first of all, we got Galissapod. Galissapod's first impression is always being shut down by the fact that it has trouble getting back to the bench position in order to go back to the active so that it could use first impression again. If you play Dawn Wings Necrozma alongside your Galissapod, then you're going to be able to slap a float stone on that Dawn Wings Necrozma and be able to invasion, retreat, and first impression over and over and over again. Rinse 
rinse, wash, repeat throughout the course of the game, even if you get end to low. So I am excited about this ability to see how it gets used alongside uh, alongside Golisopod in the upcoming format. We also have Dark Flash, an attack does 120 damage, is not affected by resistance, and Moon's Eclipse GX. You can use this attack only if you have more prize cards remaining from than your opponent and you prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. 180 damage, pretty good for a GX attack. Unfortunately, as of the time of recording this video, there is not a lot of psychic acceleration or any psychic acceleration, valid psychic acceleration in standard format. Fortunately, on the horizon, we do have that sweet, sweet Malamar that is going to be able to accelerate energy from the discard pile to your bench Pokemon. So Dawnwing's Necrozma is going to be taking full advantage of that as soon as that Malamar comes out. It's gonna be great in that deck as well, allowing you to invasion and retreat and accelerate your energy to various different Pokemon that you would like to. So Dawnwing's Necrozma, cool card. Love it for that invasion ability. Definitely gonna be useful with Golisopod. Let me know if you think of any other uses for the invasion ability in the comments below but that's it for our number eight card on the top 10 cards from ultra prism Coming in at a hot number seven, we've got Solgaleo Prism. This is just like my favorite Prism card out of the set. This is just such a cool card for metal types, that Radiant Star attack for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Attach a metal energy card from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. I love that. If your opponent's got six Pokemon in play, then that means that you can accelerate six energy from the discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. Obviously, it's got great synergy with Duskmane Necrozma, who is just very energy hungry and discard cards tons of energy in order to use its big attacks what meteor tempest i believe so this this Sogalio is just great allows you to accelerate energy under ability lock allows you to accelerate energy even when you don't have a magnezone in play and can also bust out 160 damage with corona impact uh, even though it makes it so that it can't attack next turn it's got 160 hit points this thing is just pure flames love it in metal type decks love the artwork on this card number seven on our list of top 10 cards from ultra prison <laughs> Coming in at number six, of course, we've got the backbone to the whole metal hype from this set, Magnazone himself. It's got that magnetic circuit ability. As often as you like during your turn, you may attach a metal energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. This is great. We've got a lot of good metal cards in this set. We've got Solgaleo Prism. We've got Duskmane Necrozma GX, being able to just flood these Pokemon with metal type energy so that they can just fire off big attack after big attack. Great, great card. And I'm excited to see how well this thing ends up functioning in standard format. I think I have big expectations of Magnezone. Definitely think the card has potential. Well constructed. Only has got a retreat cost of two, so that's really cool too. And just makes the deck much more mobile with Mount Coronet in the mix as well. Magnezone is just going to have plenty of energy that it needs throughout the course of the game to accelerate two Pokemon in order to fire off these big attacks. Definitely got high hopes from Magnezone in our upcoming standard format, which is why it's our number six card on the top 10 Pokemon. Coming in at number five, we've got Dusk Main Necrozma GX to top off that metal archetype coming out of this set. Duskmane is really the juice for the whole thing. If we don't have Duskmane Necrozma, there's really no point. There's nobody to accelerate to with your Magnezone. There's nobody to support with your Solgaleo Prism. There's nobody to get energy back for with your Mount Coronet. Duskmane Necrozma is the thing that makes this all work. This dude has got 190 hit points, metal type, ultra beast Pokemon with three crazy attacks. Claw Slash for just three energy, great. Can knock out your lowly basics without actually discarding energy. Love that. Sun's Eclipse GX, three energy, 250 damage. This deck is going to go behind in prizes early. 
So it doesn't really matter that you can only use this attack if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, because Sun's Eclipse GX will easily catch you right back up with 250 damage for only three energy. And then of course, Meteor Tempest, 220 damage can knock out almost anything in standard format, anything in standard format with a choice band. And you're going to discard three energies from those Pokemon, but that does not matter. With Malcoronet, Magnezone, you're going to be reloading that energy on Dustmane Necrozma turn after turn. So this card is a total house, love this thing. I just think that this this archetype does have some promise in standard format and I'm excited to see how it does at the upcoming tournaments for this new format. Coming in at number four, we've got another Prism card. This card was mistranslated at first, but now we've got an errata on it. Cyrus Prism Star, this card is super cool. It's a supporter card. A lot of players are hyping this thing. In Greninja decks, you could even play it in the new Metal deck as well. We've never really had a supporter card that is just this powerful at disrupting your opponent's field. So let's take a look at it. It says you can't play this card if you don't have any water or metal Pokemon in the active position. That's what the errata says. The original card was translated as having metal or water Pokemon in play. That would be way too busted because then you could just splash it into any deck that you could throw a metal or a water Pokemon in, but you have to have that Pokemon in the active position. It's a little more difficult to use than that. And it says your opponent chooses two bench Pokemon and shuffles the others and all cards attached to them into the deck. So very disruptive. If your opponent's got a field of five Pokemon, they really want to keep all of them. They have to keep two and they shuffle the rest in. Cyrus has a lot of potential, especially with Greninja at just disrupting things. What's up, Kevin? We're doing the top 10 video here. Moving on. We're at number four with Cyrus right now. So that's it for Cyrus. I think this card definitely has potential. I'm excited to see what it ends up doing at tournaments in the weeks to come. And here's my Secret Rare Skateboard. Shout out to a Skateboard for being my favorite card out of Ultra Prism. Unfortunately, a Skateboard I don't think is gonna quite make it onto my top 10 list, Kevin. It's not gonna, it's top number one in my heart though. All right, so that's it. Number four card out of Ultra Prism. number three we've got super boost energy this card is super sweet and the reason I put it so high at the number three spot is just because it is a shoe in for Gardevoir GX Gardevoir GX is one of the best decks in format I mean the deck won worlds the deck has continued to show top postings top placings ever since then and this card is going to be in every Gardevoir GX deck why would you not play this thing not only is it a rainbow energy when it's attached to a stage two Pokemon it counts as every type of energy when attached to a stage two but when you have three stage twos to play which Guard of War does pretty often, it's going to count as four energy. Four energy. So you could easily just come out of nowhere, only got one Guard of War GX in play. You could attach this thing to a Guard of War GX uh, if you have, I don't know, I said no Guard of War GX in play. All right, so you've got one and maybe you got two Gallades in play. All right, you've only got one Guard of War GX in play and two Gallades on the bench. And you're like, oh no, how will I accelerate all this energy to take this huge knockout? How about super boost energy? And you accelerate for turns so you could get five energy in play with just one guard of war that is insane if you have other guard of war gx's in play so you have three guard of war gx's in play you can attach super boost energy for turn and then you can also accelerate three more energies so you could get like seven energies into play with three guard of war gx that's insane with choice band you're knocking out anything this super boost energy is an excellent addition to the guard of war archetype and it counts as a fairy energy as well even when you don't have three stage two Pokemon in play. So it's not a dead card. You could still use infinite force with it, even if you just have two stage two Pokemon in play. And as soon as you get that third one into play, it you know, totally busts out. It is a four energy energy card. So I think this card is just a no brainer in Gardevoir GX. Gardevoir GX always has stage two Pokemon in play and it's just going to allow that deck to hit some insane numbers with minimal resources. Really love it in that deck for that reason. So that's why it's our number three card on the top 10 cards from Ultra Prism.
And without further ado, coming in at number two, we've got Glaceon GX, probably the most hyped GX Pokemon out of this set, and for good reason. This thing's got a crazy ability. Freezing Gaze, as long as this Pokemon's your active Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX in play and in their hand and their discard pile got no abilities. So this thing shuts down Tapu Lele. This thing shuts down Decidueye. This thing shuts down Tapu Lele. I mean, that is the big deal. You get a turn one ability lock going first with energy evolution Eevee. You can easily use water energy, ex evolve that Eevee into Glaceon, and then you shut down your opponent. If they cannot, you know, if they cannot go ahead and just have the Bridget in their hand, they can't Lele for it. So that is a huge, huge advantage for Glaceon GX decks when going first. Also shuts down Trade. I mean, so Zorark GX Trade, that is a huge deck in of itself. Being able to totally shut down Trade makes those decks completely lock up. A lot of Zorark decks don't play a whole lot of supporters, so being able to go in with Glaceon early can make those decks just clog up and fail to find the cards that they need in order to be successful throughout the course of the game. And in addition to an amazing ability, Freezing Gaze, that you can get into play on the first turn of the game, it's also got two very usable attacks. Frost Bullet, very remnant, reminiscent of Night Spear, does 90 and then 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon for a water and two colorless. Glaceon's got Aqua Patch. You can access this with double colorless. It is pretty easy to get this thing going. You know, Energy Evolution, turn one, and then double colorless energy, turn two, and you're pulling off a turn two Frost Bullet just like that. We've also got Polar Spear GX. This attack does 50 damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So if you've sniped something with 30 damage from Frost Bullet, you can easily come in with Polar Spear GX and knock that thing out clean. If your opponent's Pokemon has three damage counters on it, which you know, uh, fortunately is the amount of damage that you're doing with a Frost Bullet, then you could do 150 damage with Polar Spear GX. If you have a Choice Band, that's 180. That means if a 210 hit point Pokemon has three damage counters on it, you can knock it out with Polar Spear GX with just a Choice Band. So great all around card. I'm excited to see how players end up using Glaceon. Oh yeah, and you could totally use Cyrus with Glaceon as well, which I forgot to mention on the Cyrus part of the card. So that is pretty cool too. I think Glaceon definitely has some potential heading forward. One-sided ability lock has always been very strong. So I'm excited to see what kind of things Glaceon can pull, uh, pull into the game with this just incredible card. So that's it, Glaceon GX at our number two spot. And of course, are you really surprised? The number one card in Ultra Prism is Cynthia. Cynthia, definitely the most hyped card. It is the like a crazy expensive full art card right now. The artwork is awesome. The effect is awesome. The return of Professor Oak's new theory, Shuffle Draw 6. The players have been wanting it. Now we finally get it. That is awesome. Just a great third supporter, finally. We've been really using Sycamore and Anne a whole lot in our decks and then just trying to supplement the rest maybe with a couple copies of Lele and one Lily. Some decks play like one Lily, but now we finally have a valid third supporter that is dependable and usable throughout the course of the game. Greninja is going to love this thing. You don't even need to run a Lele and Greninja anymore. Just supplement, pad that supporter count with Cynthia's. You'll be fine. Good to go. Very, very cool card. The ability to shuffle draw six means that decks don't necessarily have to play high counts of Sycamore anymore either. If you're playing a deck that really wants to keep its resources like Zorark, where you really don't want to discard those puzzles of time, Cynthia is going to be your best friend in standard format. Just a great consistency boost for the game, a great consistency option. Shuffle Draw 6 is just very vanilla, good, and with the addition of things like Octillery, you can Shuffle Draw 6, play a couple cards, and refill a little bit more. With Zoark, you could just Shuffle Draw 6 and then continue to trade afterwards. So I think Cynthia is going to be great in these decks. I'm do not think, however, that Cynthia is an outright replacement for cards like N and Sycamore. I would not go out doing that. Uh, I think that 
and still needs to be played in high counts. Just the ability to discard, uh, to, to disrupt your opponent's hand is too good not to play. You need to play something. You need to have access to that end of two. When it's time to end of two, you need to be able to end of two every single time. If you miss that end of two and your opponent's just got like a card of eight hands, like they're going to win the game, guaranteed. So it's definitely good to keep your counts of N high, especially without versus Seeker in format. But I do see Cynthia just being very strong, obviously good for that Garchomp deck too. If you do plan on playing that, Cynthia, just a great option to have as a third great supporter in standard format. So that about wraps it up for our top 10. Now I know some people may have some beef with my top 10. No, Garchomp is not in there. No, Empoleon is not in there either. I think that Garchomp, Empoleon, and Dugtrio are all going to be like tier three decks. I don't think that they're going to be all that great. I've tested them all and I just haven't been super impressed by any of them. Unfortunately, I think they have some natural inconsistencies and there are just better, stronger, more more solid decks that are going to be tier one. So that's the reason I didn't include those. But let me know what you guys think of the top 10 list in the comments below. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, follow me on Twitter at enjoyfriend. You can yell at me on there if you don't like my top 10, E-N-J-O-I friend. I've got a Patreon to help support this channel in the comments below. Thank you all for watching the video. Let me know what you think of these cards in Ultra Prism. Do you like Ultra Prism as a set? Are you stoked about it? I'm pretty stoked about it. Thank you all for watching. Peace.